Hi everybody, in this video I'll show you uh, progresses about the Lua uh, debugger in Redis. During the uh, London meeting um, uh, that uh, was um, held in London a few weeks ago, many users requested, um, requested for um, some way to more easily write Lua scripts and uh, one of the most complex thing involving uh, uh, writing uh, complex scripts is that there is no easy way to to debug uh, to debug uh, lua scripts running inside redis because uh, it's very hard to debug them outside the redis environment because of course a lua script inside redis interacts a lot with the uh, data set and sends commands to redis and it's also hard to debug it inside redis because we had no uh, support for stepping breakpoints and so forth so while in london um, my my co-worker itamar uh, showed uh, slides with random uh, ideas about the new Redis developments and one of these was uh, Lua Debugger that was requested many many times by multiple users in, uh, in the uh, recent uh, years and so when we returned back we talked a bit about the interface that such a debugger could export and uh, we started to make an idea about how it could work from the point of view of the internals also and finally we have an implementation that's currently in the ldb branch in uh, github but uh, will be soon uh, merged uh, in the testing and unstable branch so the debugger will be part of redis 3 uh, you but of course because it's just a development tool you can use it to develop scripts that then you use in the context of uh, newer version, older version of Redis. You can use it just for developing de development in uh, the unstable branch and then uh, use your scripts with older instances. <laughs> okay, so let's start Redis server. The way it works is pretty trivial it it's basi basically implemented in terms of support inside the redis server and of support in the our redis cli utility uh, that uh, is the client of the debugger it's possible to write other clients if uh, required the graphical clients or stuff like that but the default tooling for redis will be to use redis cli so you need Redis server, uh, the command line interface, and some editor. So let's remove the old script and start a new one. So I can write my Lua script. For example, it can just uh, call the ping command. put the result in a variable and return it. Normally with Redisly what you do is to use eval in order to evaluate a script when uh, the when uh, developing an, a new Lua script. And that's the effect of the script just calling the command and returning the result. In order to start eval in the bugging mode, you prefix the eval option with ldb, that is short for Lua debugger. When you start the uh, command line interface in this way, the output changes. You are notified you entered the Lua debugging session and you can write quit or restart to restart the script in, uh, from scratch in debugging mode again and help in order to show the debugging commands and you here uh, as you can see 
the debugger starts in stepping mode so it stops at the first line that will go it's going to do something and it's the first line when when local foo variable is assigned to the result of the picking command when the debugger stops in a given line it means that this line was not yet executed it's the next line that will be executed now we can use the help command in order to show a list of commands available in the debugger and we have help step that runs the current line and stop again to the next line and so forth we will explore all the commands one after the other let's start with step and it's alias that's next step so what happened is that because the line uh, executed uh, resulted in the execution of a redis command you see that the debugger when in stepping mode will show the result of uh, the 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 command sent to redis and the result received and will stop again to the next line um, so we can uh, in order to understand where we are inside the program we can use the list command it just lists the two lines of code our script is composed of and uh, the arrow and the yellow colorization shows uh, the user that we are in a given line another um, command is print that uh, is able to print the value uh, inside a given variable and so as you can see here we have a lua table that's okay set to the pong result this is the way uh, redis uh, scripts represent status replies basically okay so let's write a more complex script in order to test the other features for example we may want to write a script that takes two uh, two keys source and destination and also a number of items to move from the list stored at the first key to the list stored uh, to the list identified by the, um, the second key count Okay, you know that uh, in the context of Redis scripting, the keys and the arguments we pass to the script are separated. Uh, with Redis CLI, a comma is used in order to uh, divide the two different arguments. So, uh, okay, we saved the script and you can use the restart command in order to use again uh, the debugger with the new script it will reload the new version and start again so i can step let's check the value of source key it's nil because we need to pass the right arguments to the ready script so we call list a list a our first list and list b our second list we use a count of 10 let's see if this works okay let's step okay another step the destination variable is also set correctly and the next step um, let's use list to show what happened here it he writes six because the the script terminated at this point after executing the line uh, at 3 <coughs> but now we should have a, a count okay the function already returned so we have no longer uh, variables in the current context so if we want to debug 
count as well we could just add an instruction to do whatever we want let's restart okay as you can see count is not uh, the right value. Let's check why. So our argument vector is empty and this is because I forget to add the comma because without the comma all the arguments are in the keys Lua table list A, list B and then instead if I put the comma it separates the keys from the arguments so this time I have keys and I have arguments as well. Okay. So now I want to check that uh, at line uh, three we have count set to the to the right uh, count transformed to number. Uh, in order to show this. Uh, I will use a, a feature of the Lua debugger that's breakpoints. I can see just break 5 and now you can see that there is a breakpoint and the line is highlighted and uh, uh, it's marked in a different uh, way compared to the other lines and at this point I can use the continue command in order to execute the script till the breakpoint is rigid this time we can read stop it at 5 and so stop reason is breakpoint. Now the count variables looks ok and we can continue writing our script. So, uh, what we want to do is like this is the first list ok and uh, this is the second list and the command should move the last uh, oh, we can just move the f the the last argument of the first list as the first argument of the second list okay and um, in order to do so I can just basically uh, call the air pop command in the source key to get the element and then I can uh, L push the item in the target uh, in the target uh, list and then I may return the length of the target list after it was after one element was added as you can see right now we are not using the count argument so we are just doing a single operation we will evolve the script in a second let's test if this works to start let's use restart okay so next 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 okay airpop list a returned null because uh, the list is empty right now and so this gives us uh, a good moment in order to introduce a new command of the debugger that's the redis command redis command just ex allows us to execute uh, uh, commands in the context of Redis from within the debugger so we can inspect the Redis keys and do whatever we want we can also wrote, write things inside the, inside the Redis data space while the script is blocked uh, all the debugger commands have a single letter prefix so that I can use a single letter in order to, to run commands for example the redis command starts for r so i can write just r ping okay in order to test my script i want 
the the Redis uh, the Redis key is to be populated with summing, so I can write like uh, I can uh, air push list a a b c d and air push list b one two three four. Now I can start the bu the bug again. This time, when airpop is is executed, it actually gets the element d, and then it uh, l push the element uh, in uh, in list b, and we can inspect this l range list a 0 menu 1 minus 1 and l range list b 0 minus 1 so uh, the d element was correctly put in front of the destination list so apparently our script works and finally um, the ln command was executed and 5 was returned so our script works so far let's uh, improve the script so that we can use the count argument so while count is greater than zero do this operation again and again I should de decrement my counter at every iteration but in order to show you something I, I will not do that the first thing I want to show is that if I restart the script I, and I run uh, L range again. As you can see, the list is back to the original value it had. So D is not moved in the second list, and also list B, it's the same. So every time I, ru I run the uh, debugging session, when the debugging session uh, finished, I get all the changes rolled back so that I can debug the script with the same data set again and again and again and it's a lot more deterministic there is also an option uh, in order to retain the changes but uh, uh, this is rarely uh, useful there are times where it is useful but for now we will not use it uh, <coughs> another thing that it's interesting is that now we have uh, an infinite loop because we have uh, our while loop without uh, the uh, decrement of the count argument note that the list command only show us a few lines around the current uh, line we are going to execute it's possible to say list 5 if we want to list the source code, uh, the source code around line 5 and I can also specify the size of the context just one line before and after however there is also a wall command that shows the, the, the full source of the current script so let's see what happens if I write continue and I leave the, the script table to run without breakpoints uh, it, it didn't work and just returned 5 because okay it worked because we have a return that should be outside so it was inside the while loop so we were not really using the, the while loop now I can continue again and there is an error in line 7 line 7 it's ready call and push dest and item and the error is the error is uh, the common argument must be string or integer now we know that dest uh, or item probably item it's not a string or number for some reason why the while loop is is executing 
So let's deb debug why it is. And this allows us to introduce yet a new fe feature. Breakpoints, as we shown them, are useful, but the problem is that sometimes you need to break the script uh, uh, when a given condition happens. So uh, the debugger has a Redis break point command that simulates a breakpoint. So I write if item is nil, then add a breakpoint in this line. I can restart my script and continue the execution. But it didn't work. And uh, so let's use stepping instead. OK, so item, it's, it's uh, OK, and destination key, it's OK, of course. And item is fine as well. OK. OK, so the problem was that uh, item uh, r r r is false at this point. At this point is false because uh, uh, there are no longer, um, no longer elements inside the list. Uh, so this was the right instruction in, in order to simulate the breakpoint. Let's start the script and continue. OK, this time we successfully stopped with Redis breakpoint called. And we can see that we are about to exec execute the next instruction, and this is the one that will generate the exception. I made an error because in order to debug this uh, in a better way, uh, I it was better to just check if item was a string or a number, otherwise to call the breakpoint instead of testing for nil directly. OK, so what we can do here is that if item is false, then we can break the execution. Or better, if item is not false, then we call the command. This is a very convoluted way to, to write this loop, but it's for the sake of writing an infinite loop. So still the our count equal count minus one condition is missing. So if we restart the script this time, we enter an infinite loop. But the debugger is uh, able to detect this timeout rigid infinite loop, and we can uh, uh, understand what is uh, what is happening because it allows us to step inside the infinite loop. Okay, but because we know the actual solution, we just add our condition, and what we do here instead is if item it's not equal to false. Uh, it's if it's e equal to false, we just break this one this time we it should be able to work let's try continue okay Sorry, I am outside the debugger version, uh, the debugging. Um. In order to to check if the script works, if I if I just do continue, and I see that the list at the end is eight, and the debugging session terminated. If I restart it, I will see again. Uh, basically, 
I will see the, the data set as it was before the script is executed because as we said we roll back so instead what I should do is to, to inspect at the end of the script that everything is I, I expect it to be I just uh, add a breakpoint here oh actually uh, just a static breakpoint will do so I add a breakpoint to line 11 now that that I can add multiple breakpoints and I will have multiple breakpoints and it will stop at every breakpoint set and I can remove all the breakpoints with B0 or I can add breakpoints and then write just B in order to list all the breakpoints but in this case what I want is just a breakpoint at 11 let's continue ok list A it's empty and list B instead contains all the elements so our command implementation is working as expected and let's see a few more a few more comments uh, so let's restart our session and add a breakpoint in line no 9 and continue now the print command uh, if uh, used without arguments would sh just show us all the local variables that are inside our script and uh, that's interesting uh, because it allows to, to show the full state of the program in a given step uh, print basically uh, uh, if we are in inside the nested functions is able to automatically if uh, a given variable is not find, found inside this uh, current call frame it navigates backward in order to find a call frame where this name is defined it also has have the ability to access just two specific global variables that's argv and keys otherwise global variables are not used for redis lua scripts and another interesting feature is the redis debug command that produces logs in this console so the problem we had uh, a second ago could be solved much more easily writing redis debug value of item item let's restart the script and uh, if i continue and run the script i will say the rebug the, the debug uh, lines and i will say that it's d c b a and then false so it's very easy to spot bugs in this way okay i can remove this and uh, other commands i have is uh, um, trace to show the backtrace is i am uh, inside nested functions i can evolve some lua code for example if i don't remember very well uh, something uh, uh, about uh, an API, API call like SHA1X4 I can test it however note that eval is not able to evaluate code in the context of the, of the current call stack so it evaluates code uh, not inside the function we are stepping into but uh, in a different call frame uh, so it's not for inspection you must use print you cannot change the environment of the of the, of the function currently uh, another interesting uh, command is maxlen and what maxlen is uh, all about it's very easy to show if i uh, load too many items uh, in a given list so i uh, loaded into my list a number of, a big number of uh, uh, items and now i start the debugger now if i do something like uh, l range my list 0 minus 1 
that would be a too large output for my console, especially in real scripts manipulating large LUDA tables or large red results, so that the debugger trims long lines. And uh, using a max length, max length, you can set up or you can disable completely the truncation of the replies, or you can at least uh, uh, you can at least um, use a, a more sane uh, default for your use case. This time we will see the full uh, the full output of the script. Okay. I think it's pretty much everything uh, to know about the new new feature. And another thing, uh, the last thing I want to show you is the uh, way to start the to start the debug in a way that the changes are retained this time. Okay, if I uh, run uh, the debugger in this way list A it's our list a few steps after it's different if I quit the debugger right now uh, I will see that Okay, when I mm, sorry, the the list is empty because when I quit the debugger, the script is executed the, till end, unless I don't use uh, the abort command that stops the execution of the script. But this time the script was fully executed, and uh, indeed, as you can see, the changes in my keys in the Redis key space w were retained. So I have uh, the list B and so forth. There is a big difference between the server behavior when synchronous mode is used and uh, non-synchronous mode for the banging is used. Basically, when we use LDB normally with rollback of change, Redis forks. It's a forked session. So basically, it's not just that there are the changes are rolled back, but also the server is not stopped. So you can have uh, uh, your another programmer in your team doing another debugging session in the same server or using uh, the same uh, uh, development server. Instead, when you use the synchronous mode, the server is completely unreachable because uh, in order to create a load debugger, you we need to stop inside the execution of the script uh, as Lua continues the execution of the script step by step, so we cannot re-enter the ready seven loop to serve other requests. So uh, by default, it's much better to use just uh, an asynchronous forked session and to revert to synchronous mode only when uh, you really, really need your debugging uh, uh, session changes to be retained in uh, in the dataset. Okay, I think this is uh, that's all, and these changes are going to be merged inside uh, the testing and the stable uh, branch uh, uh, in a matter of days. So I hope you will have a better time when uh, writing Lua scripts. Bye bye.